Today we play the mod for Hearts of Iron 4. This is version 1 of the mod. Next time we will be playing version 2. All you have to do is comment what you want to be added to the mod. It can be anything, literally anything. For example, you could say erase Germany or make hamburgers a weapon and then whatever recommendation gets the most likes after 48 hours will be added to version 2. And you can say whatever you want, but I must operate by a few rules. I'm not going to change the map for every episode, so if you ask for a new continent, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I might do something a little sneaky to get around to making a new map. Second, no change I make will erase a past change. Third, no funny demonetization business. If you guys want something edgy beyond what I'm comfortable with, I'll probably comply, but I won't be smacking myself with a community guideline strike anytime soon. And fourth, if the comment that gets the most likes turns out to be a long, long list of a ton of unrelated things, I will only do the first thing. Maybe, maybe I'll do all of them, I don't know, but definitely the first one. And so that is how the mod works. You know. And an obvious question from your perspective now is, if our comments decide what gets into the mod, what is in version 1? Well, I took the liberty, you know, to go into the United Kingdom and fix maybe their worst path. The global defense path for Britain. If you do steady as she goes, which is the democratic path, you can choose between the global defense path or the home defense path, either the historical path or the no more appeasement path. Which uh, you would think the no more appeasement path would be better, and it's better, but not, not really by that much, honestly. So I decided to make it better. Quite a bit better. So we will play that today as we start our journey in the mod, and who knows, maybe we'll come back to this path a few more versions down the line and see how chaotic it has become. But now with that said, let us begin. And while I did make the United Nation path pretty good, uh, it's still not our most priority right now. The limited rearmament focus is one of the best ones, so it's always a good idea to start off with that one and then do whatever we can based off of the current world tension. I might even go for reinforce the empire and encourage colonial elite before beginning the path. I won't quite go and form the Imperial Federation or anything, but I'll at least get that nice research bonus. Regardless, in the vanilla steady as she goes global defense path, we can do the maintaining Imperial integrity focus and make all of our subjects lose autonomy. So we've given refuge to both German and Italian scientists, and we've encouraged colonial elite, so our research will be amazing from now on, and we can, of course, now focus on our political path. I already have my divisions in the Middle East to secure the oil imports when it comes to that. These guys won't be our main concern. We'll have much more exciting targets to deal with in this new path. And now we actually have to wait for, you know, Neville Chamberlain to be the leader before we can continue with the path, so we'll do other stuff like the shadow scheme. Now the second Neville Chamberlain becomes Prime Minister, we are going to do a vote of no confidence to get rid of him and replace him with uh, Winston Churchill, of course. And now that we've done no further appeasement, we'll kickstart the war industry, get a ton of free factories, then we will secure the oil exports, maintain imperial integrity, enforce the naval treaties, and then we can move on to our new stuff. And yes, we have finally embraced our toothpaste identity as the United Nations. We're continuing to um, fulfill our final secure the oil imports war goal and, you know, invade the Netherlands. But yeah, we have a lot of other people to deal with now, like 
Ireland. We need to protect them and protect the Netherlands too. And we'll of course protect Paris soon enough. Yep, and our UN peacekeeping forces have entered Ireland. This is good. There, there will be peace in Ireland forever now. And some lore for those of you who don't know. The League of Nations, kind of the predecessor to the United Nations. It was kind of the brainchild of Woodrow Wilson, but then his own country, the US Congress, wouldn't vote to join it, so the US never really joined it, and it was kind of a failure. But this time we now will just bypass Congress and force them to join our, um, our United Nation. It'll be great. The US hasn't gotten very powerful yet, so now is the perfect time to invite them into the UN. We also, as the good guys, offered to protect Danzig for Poland, so yeah, we will now protect them. We have now founded the glorious UN Recruitment Center. It's a new city that we built up from the ground. It has a lot of people there just waiting to be recruited. And we're definitely not occupying India at all. We've just established the UN Happy Zone, a zone overseen by the United Nations directly. It's a good place. There, they're just very happy there. We're also going to invade the US now, because that's a good idea. <laughs> they're guaranteeing a lot of people that should be guaranteed by us, not them. And we need New York so we can establish an American headquarters, make um, a UNHQ in New York for no reason at all. Yeah, declaring on the US in 38 is pretty good. I know this, this might be, this focus tree might be kind of overpowered a little bit, but when you can basically do this playing as fascist Britain, or well, maybe not fascist Britain, but King's Party Britain anyways, if you play your cards right, so it's completely fair. And we're democratic, so we can't even go into war economy, so we're even weaker. Well, I guess King's Party is neutrality, so they'll still have that problem, but yeah, well, who cares? You know, I kind of want to go fascist UN just for the, just for the memes, but I think we still have that one. Steady as she goes focus or something. Well, I guess not. Maybe we could just recruit some sort of advisor, or I guess we can't actually. Meh, unfortunate. I guess this is my mod. I could just add it in there if someone wants me to, I guess. I feel like there are much more interesting things to add to the mod than just a ton of new stuff for this one UN path, but I don't know, it's whatever gets the most likes, you know. I'm not gonna secretly pull the strings or anything. We've also seized Seattle, we'll send one guy to go seize Portland, and Sacramento, and San Francisco, and all these other cities that are gonna eventually be the capital of the US. Well, yeah, I guess Los Angeles already is the capital of the US now. Oh, Greece wants some money? Hey, hey, we're the, we're the UN, not not Germany. I'm sorry, old chaps. Yeah. And here we are, perfect. The Philippines, a perfect base to launch our invasion of Japan what, that we inevitably have to do because they have defied our glorious naval treaty. Okay, and we have directly occupied most of the US, but we left them with the British North American territories and we just put FDR right back in power because why not? Now we can finally establish the American headquarters. We'll, we'll do that. And now our new capital is the United Nations headquarters. That's, that's good. That's, that's what we needed. I guess it's now time to invade Japan. We've now got the worst national spirit ever, keeping the peace. Like, it lets us fight offensive wars without much problems, but our divisions are kind of terrible now, but that's, that's okay. We'll soon be able to form the World Bank. We just have to either take out Italy, Germany, Japan, or Russia. Russia would be the most impractical. Japan is probably the easiest one to take out. We might even be able to take them out without having to get dragged into a war with another major, but I think Germany's going to demand the Sudetenland soon, and we did do the no further appeasement focus, so it'd be a little weird of us to appease them now, but I feel like this is a pretty good situation for appeasement if we want to do that. Okay, Czechoslovakia must be defended. There we go, they declare war on them. Italy joins the Axis. Yeah, that's that's fun. France needs to get some divisions on Italy's border, but yeah, we'll, we're, we're just getting all of our divisions to the United Nations Netherlands, and then we can invade Germany and everything will be perfect. We'll, we'll just deal with all of the threats at the same time and occupy them with our 
Amazing forces. I guess I should move some divisions to Danzig too. Yeah. And France has disappointed us. They have refused our generous offer of allowing us to directly occupy Paris in northern France. We could get an annex wargle against them, but I think this is a bad time to attack France. <sighs> so they can get away with this for now. But we will have our we will have our chance eventually. We're also going to force Canadians to defend Danzig. Anyways, I'm going to invade Japan too. I think it's a decent idea. Yeah, let's let's do this. Um, Japan is now sided with the Axis. At least they're not in the Axis, so we can still capitulate them separately. The Canadians are still doing a great job of defending Danzig. It's very impressive. The Czechs are encircling German divisions, which is a good sign. We have, though, landed divisions on the Japanese mainland, which is very, very, very good, actually. Uh, we have some divisions in Singapore and some in the Philippines, and we'll bring everyone over to uh, destroy the Japanese Empire together. Uh, and we're doing this with like minus 10% organization. See, we're just, we're just that powerful. Well, and uh, this is kind of, uh, kind of easy when Japan is at war with China. Immediately started destroying their entire navy and sinking all their convoys. <laughs> And that's, that's what happens when you have the um, British Navy and American Navy and declare war on Japan in 1939. Okay, Japan is now our great friend, democratic Japan. We've liberated them and they're very happy now. And now we can, I think, establish the World Bank. Oh, I guess we have to occupy Paris if we want to do this. Uh, we will, we'll get to that later on, yeah. And we did the classic move of um, landing in Hamburg and the Canadians are still doing a great job holding Danzig. Um, yeah, Africa was, was, wasn't was very good, but Italy will capitulate soon and it'll all be fine. <laughs> they're, they're losing to France, so, you know, they're not doing so well. Oh, and there's a civil war in Germany. That's, uh, that's kind of good. <laughs> We'll invite good Germany to our faction, and I think that should end this, even though it was kind of already over, considering we occupy Berlin. Hmm. Well, this is a very cursed world. I guess I can give Danzig back to Germany. We did a great job protecting it, and then the Soviets invaded Poland and gave half of Poland to Germany right before they capitulated. And then, of course, they were capitulated by the other Germany in the Civil War, so we couldn't take anything, but they're in our faction, so it's as good as if we owned them. Okay, I guess we'll just establish happy democracy Poland in Danzig, the free city of Danzig, yeah. Anyways, there's one final thing we still have to do, yeah. France is gonna get, oh yeah, I, I forgot, we can't can't declare on them because we're democratic. Ah, wait. So I can't even complete this. Yeah, that's that's true. I had to have, I had to get that war goal in that one event. I should have just got the war goal, or maybe declared war. I can't. I can't remember. It's, I guess we're forced to be the good guys. Okay, France, you can join again. It's it's okay. We can all live happily ever after as the UN and the great the great allies and our great friend British North America who hates us. But yes, that is all for today as the United Nations or the United Kingdom that has become the United Nations. And remember to leave your ideas for what you would like in the next version in the comments, you know. Hopefully this turns out to be interesting and something terrible isn't spammed down there and ruins the entire experiment before it even begins, but it's possible and I will not complain if that happens. Anyways, I guess I will see you all next time in version two.